Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week we'll talk about transferring certain graphics, for instance, callout tags and sections from one project to another. Now, if you're working in Revit, there's a couple tools you can use to copy things from one project to another. One is Transfer Project Standards, that's located here. And the other one is actually you can act go to Insert. You go over here, Insert from File, and you can actually insert uh, elements from a file. So that does some pretty good stuff, but it doesn't actually take the whole elements from one project to another. So if I need to, let's say, take the consultant's graphics or let's say whoever the lead architect is, I want to bring those into my project, how do I do that? It's a two-step process, so what we're going to do is take a look at it here. I'm going to jump on over to a quick little sketchboard here. And uh, here we are. Now, let's talk about what, how these things work. Well, in Revit, what we'll do is I'm going to change this color quick. We actually have our section tag, right? So there it is. It's a beautiful thing. Now, this element is actually built up of sub-elements. So let's discuss that first. Now, we have this part here, which is the head, and we have this part with the tail. And it comes along, and what it does, it makes the whole assembly like this. This is called the section tag, right? Now, we have to build that before we even associate it with a view. So how does all this stuff come together? Let's take a look back at Revit now. So back in Revit, here we are. You'll see that I have this tag. This is pretty much straight out of Revit, so there it is. Now, you'll notice that this other one is not. It looks all kind of crazy. Now, before I go here, section, this is actually, that's a section. That is a view, okay? The view, then hit edit type, says what tag, section tag, do you want to use? You'll see it here, section head, wall section filled, section tag filled. So what does this come from? Now, if I click on it, you'll see there's three dots, and it throws me into another dialog. This is actually letting me build the section tag. This is a section, live section. This is a section tag. Now, you can go directly from there, or if you'd like, you can go start off under Manage, Additional Settings, and you'll see it says Callout Tags, Section Tags, etc. I'll start with Section Tags. Now, let's say I want a new one. Currently, it says Section Head, Wall, Section Filled, etc. We duplicate it. Now, as you know, the company name is CAD Tech Seminars. We can also be found on the web at thebimguys.com. I forgot to start with that. So uh, there's our CTS, CAD Tech Seminars, uh, section, head, and tail of goodness. All right, we hit OK on that. Now, if you already have this built in one of your, one of your files and you want to transfer it to another, you can skip this step. I just want to show you how these things are built. Now, we're actually going to say, what is the section head? I can come down here and actually create my own heads. Now you're going, well, where does this even start? So now we have to go back even further. We'll go back to our sketch pad. And before we even come up here and start to mess with, let me go ahead and change the color quick. Before we even mess with this element, like where did this element come from? That's a family. So what we can do is we can come over here and we can go down over to our browser. We can open up that family and edit it and then bring it back in as a new name. So let's go ahead and start to dissect it down back in Revit. Now you see it says section head filled. Cancel. I can come out here and as I scroll down you're going to hit families, right? And you see it says call out head and section head. I've taken the regular section head that Revit has, right clicked on it, and see it says edit. I hit edit, it opens up. At this point you come in here and tweak it. Make it pretty, change whatever you want. That is up to you. Once you've done that you go down, you save it, okay, and load it back into the project. So you load it back in, and it goes back into that project control tab, so we're back here again. Now, I've added it in, loaded it back in, and you'll see down again in the families now, you should have one that says CT, section head, and you call them whatever you'd like. So we build the pieces that we need based off of the Revit standard pieces. Now, we're going to go back up to Manage, Additional Settings, section tags. Now we a moment ago started to create one. I think I canceled out of it. So let's go ahead and duplicate it. We're going to have, say this is going to be my uh, section. So let's put CTS in front of it. CAD Tech Seminars section tag of goodness. Alright, that'll definitely stand out. We hit OK. Now we say section head. What's the section head we're going to use? We're going to use the CT section head. Alright, we scroll on up pick the one that works best for us. Then we say, what about section tail? We come down here and you may have created a section tail also. I hit OK on that and you'll notice 
that yeah, it didn't change. The reason being is this is a view. All right, now I go back to the view. Excuse me, edit type, and in here you'll see it's a section. I can now drop this down, and I've dropped this down. You'll see there's our CTS section head of goodness. So both of them come to the same bucket or same area. At this time, I hit OK, and now this wall section is using that section head of goodness. We hit OK, and you'll see it changes it out to those two graphics. So you're like, awesome. That's not too bad, right? Same with this. If I grab this element, and I go over here, and I, I've called the view a triple ring. I've given the name, I've edited it. I've rename the view type to triple ring and then I tell it to use the callout tab triple ring again I go in here hit the three dots it opens up another subset you see it's just a subset and I tell it to use the CT callout head it uses that head instead of the ones that are here I hit OK you won't put the corner radiuses set that up it's all good so the triple ring callout tag is being used for my triple ring view and there it is so we've got them here like dude that's pretty cool now how do we get these two other projects now, it's actually not complicated, so let's give it a shot. I'm going to do a crossing over both of these. Now, let's verify where I am. I'm going to scroll up top, and you want you to notice that I'm in, let's say, floor plan, right? So I'm in my floor plan right here, and I can change these views over to all. It'd probably be better just to do that. Now, um, at this time, I want to take these and copy them to another project or another. Maybe I'm working on a separate template, whatever it may be. Let's start a new project. Drop this down, New, Project. We'll go scrolling on out. Let's go browsing. And we use a commercial template and hit OK. That is out of the box Revit. Nothing special, nothing crazy, right? Now, you'll notice that I called that other one triple ring. I'm going to go back to it and I'm going to do the same thing. Now, I made this new one, but see, it's still call wall section. Edit type, and I want it to be separate. Separate names, everything as, a, as much as separate as can be because when you bring things in, Revit has a tendency to use the objects that are in the current project. So we want to create and change the names all the way around. So I'm going to hit duplicate this name, and I'm going to call this a triple ring section. Okay, so what it's done is it, it's not going to interfere with the ones that are in the model already. Using a different, different name, different tags, everything has been named differently. Now that's that's actually a big part of this. Now I'm going to grab all, over these elements. Again, if I grab this view, that's a triple ring floor plan. And under the triple ring floor plan, I have a triple ring callout tag. So I've named them all different so they don't interfere with each other. Grab them all. I'm going to copy to the clipboard here. Copy to clipboard. So we copy them to the clipboard. Now I hit Control Tab. I'm going to go to that, to that other project. Let me drop this down. Let's go to Views. And I've got one that should just be called Project 2, right? This is the one we just opened, was it? Well, I don't even know, but this, it won't matter. This is another project I had open for a different video. Now, as I go in here, notice I don't have any triple ring floor plans, etc. I'm going to go up top and I hit paste, and I'll just paste from clipboard. And I come in here, and it's going to tell me that some things are duplicate, and here's the part that gets you in trouble. The following types already exist, but are different. The types from the project in which you are pasting will be used. So if you use the same name, it doesn't copy. So by changing all the names, you protect innocent, we hit OK. And now we hit and we place it right now. You'll notice that actually one of them's already updated. You're like, dude, that's awesome. Let me grab this one. You're like, that one didn't update. Oh man, that something sucks. Let's drop this down. Okay, triple ring. There it is. It's here. So that's how you do it. The real trick is to rename all the parts. So when they come in. They don't interfere with the parts in your project. So hope that tip helped out explaining how sections and those elements are built and also how to copy them from project to project.